In this video, I'm trying something fun, potentially, and weird, for sure, and that's to try colour grading just using waveforms. Is that possible? My partner has loaded up a few clips into Final Cut, and as you can see, I've got a very high-tech setup behind me of a piece of card, so I can't see what's going on. So I'm gonna grade these, I'm gonna share my screen capture, so you'll be able to see exactly what's happening, I'll only be able to see the waveform, and I'll share my thought process throughout. Let's go through the rules. I'll grade three clips. They could be anything that I've filmed over the last year or so. All the clips will be S-Log3. I'll give myself about two minutes to grade each one, and I'll only look and react to the grading monstrosities I've created at the very end. I've timestamped everything in this video, so if you don't want to see the process and you just want to skip to the end for a laugh, feel free. These videos are also not brought to you by any company except for maybe my Patreon, which, you know, the way that works is any funds from Patreon I put back into the channel to buy gear and then I give the gear to my backers once I've reviewed it. If that's of interest, it's inexpensive, do check out below. And of course, let me know if you like this format of video. It means a lot to me, you know, subscribe as well, hit the bell. Helps the channel grow, it's all good. Let's get on with it. Well, here we go, let's just, uh, let's dive in, shall we? I've got, Final Cut setup, you can see my screen of course. And let's look at the first clip. So no idea what this is, I cannot see anything. Uh, what do we have? This looks to me like, excuse my chair, it's really squeaky. Right, so this is log footage. It's S-Log3, so it's, it should be uh, pretty low contrast. So the first thing I wanna do is, not mask, let's add. Let's get a LUT on there, just to see what's going on. And I've got a problem here because I can't see. Uh, I might have to just look. I can't see what the shot is, but oh my God, I can't even. Let's go, let's try that one. No, I promise you guys I'm not looking. I want neutral, that will do, neutral. Okay, I'm gonna stick with that. So, this is this is a this is a high contrast scene. I don't I don't know what's going on here. I can see right here that is clipped highlights, and we've got pretty deep looking shadows already. You know, this is just the Luma waveform. It's not giving me much in the way of kind of color because it doesn't have a like an RGB overlay or anything. But I am seeing this yellow here and yellow over here. I have no idea. I have no idea what this is. Right, let's go through what I want to do. So I want to add a couple of instances of color wheels, and I'll show you why. And I'm going to add hue saturation curves. The first thing I do, I do this for every single thing I grade, absolutely everything. And I use this um, Luma versus saturation. And I'll add points at the beginning and the end. And what that does is it cleans up your shadows and highlights. So if it gets too bright, it starts to desaturate. So you have white, really white whites and the same goes with the shadows. It just desaturates just the very darkest of your shadows. So you don't get like weird, you know, blue looking or green looking shadows. That's a really good thing to do. And, and what I want is always to have this at the very end of the chain, the last thing in my chain of grading plugins. So color wheels one, let's pop that at the top. And the first thing I wanna do is just see if there's any kind of extra dynamic range going on in those highlights. No, not, not really. Okay, I'm gonna have a wild guess that this is, this is something that is meant to be clipping. Cause look, I don't think I would have shot anything like that. So that's that could be a light bulb, it could be the sun, it could be anything. It could be, maybe I'm filming something like a, I don't know, maybe a, a review of a, a light or something. Uh, and that, that could be that. That's It's just something that's just even way too, way too bright for even S-Log3. So with that in mind, I am gonna, looks like I can recover something up there. I'm gonna dip the highlights a little bit. Overall exposure, 
Now, what I want to avoid also is you see down in the, in the shadows here, I don't want to sort of bunch up all of the shadows where there could be useful, interesting things to see there. So I'm going to leave this. You can see how it starts to squash as I lower the exposure around there. So I'm going to leave it up a little bit. And then let's see what happens with midtones. And here's one thing you can do. You can actually, I've brought the, the highlights down a little bit. The shadows I can, I'll probably just leave, leave where they are. Now I like to do two stages of color wheels. One before the LUT, uh, which will feed into the lookup table. And then one after. So say, this looks like it's got a lot of contrast. So what I can do is say I wanted to, to add to it, if I wanted to make those the shadows and, and the blacks truly black, I can drag it down and it has to be the one that's after my lookup table in the chain. And, and probably here I can see there are, there's gonna be a little bit touching zero. So I don't wanna do that too much. And the highlights, given that they're clipped already, I would probably just bring them up. And again, I'm doing this after my lookup table, not before. If anything, I'm dragging down the highlights before my lookup table, because that in theory might let me kind of regain a little bit of that amazing dynamic range. So I could even bring it up to there. And you know what? I don't really know what else I can do to this. I'm gonna have a stab that that's an okay exposure. Let's move on. I, I'm, by the way, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna touch color. There's no point, you know. So anyway, let's. I'll leave it at that. Let's get rid of those the saturation adjustments, and let's move on. Uh, I am gonna I am gonna just copy the effects on that and just drop them. Uh, I can't <laughs> I can't see. Never mind. I am just gonna copy these and I'll get rid of the ones that I don't need. I can just reset them in fact, that's probably the way, because I just can't see every, you know, any pop-ups. They're behind my cardboard and that's, you know, I obviously don't want that. So I'm just gonna reset these. Um, and except I'm gonna keep this not neutral lookup table um, because it, you know, if you haven't tried Phantom LUTs and you're a Sony shooter, what are we doing? By the way, I can get you a discount use the code HARV and I'll link it below. It's just, they are just the only ones, the only must buy LUTs for Sony shooters. The only ones I would say. Right, let's look at this. This to me immediately looks like the exposure might be a little on the bright side. And the reason I say that is because there's quite a bit over 75%. There's quite a bit over 50%. And generally I like, I like things to be you know, can't, not dingy, but you know, but on, on, I like to use that 50 to zero, you know, that's my sweet spot. So let's bring everything down. And there's some pretty bright bits here. I'm not sure what's going on there. This line across here, that tells me that could be sky. That could be, um, that could be just some, some blank, color that's crossing the entire frame. It could be, you know, anything. It could be a piece of paper that's, you know, that, I don't know, or a wall or something like that. Other than that, I have no idea. No idea. There's lots of texture going on and we've got some, you know, some orangey colors. God knows. Right, I'm gonna dip some highlights and, re and regain some dynamic range. I'm just, I'm doing this just by feel. I have no idea if this is correct, obviously. Um, oh my god, this is going to be terrible. I know it is. Okay, and now let's look at this one. So, the shadows are already dark enough. I know that. The highlights, we could we could bring them up a little bit. I just think maybe maybe the mid-tones need to be lower. Something like, maybe that. Oh my god, this is just such a guess. Okay, I'm going to settle with that. I have no idea. Moving on. Copy and paste again. Okay. Uh, 
Oh, let's look at this one. Right. Again, we've got something going across the entire frame. And that, again, could be a wall or the sky or something, something else. It's hard to tell with any of these if there's a subject. I haven't been able to see. Usually, I thought that would be a giveaway. I thought that, you know, I'd be able to see the shape of roughly, you can see, uh, you know, someone's skin tones at least. You can see they're going to be peaking up at sort of 60 to 70, you know, uh, or thereabouts. Anyway, we've got green down here. I think that is grass. I think, in fact, I might go as far as to say, I think this is a landscape of some sort. I think we've got grass, I think we've got sky, and maybe trees. This is a wild stab, it's probably a, probably B-roll of a, a lens or something stupid like that. Um, all right, let's do our hue and saturation. Oh, you know what, I actually think I think I forgot to do that on the last one. I'm going to go back and do that quickly now. Did I forget to do that? Did I reset it by accident? Yes, I did. Okay. Seriously, I do that on every single grade. Moving on. Right, what are we looking at here? So, I would say this is bright enough at the moment. I'm not seeing much in the way of highlights. Oh, I've got these settings in place. Okay, if I, if I undo all of that... Yeah, okay. I probably shouldn't have undone that, actually, because that actually looked pretty good. Okay, if that... if this... if this bit is grass, I'm gonna set that about there, because they will start to saturate. This is such a... such a guess. They will start to saturate as I lower the exposure, because that's the way that you know, log and uh, with, particularly with Phantom LUTs work. Uh, I'm going to lower the highlights and that's because I'm going to boost them later and this, I am hoping, will work. Uh, shadows, I'm go actually going to bring up a little bit because again, I'm going to bring them down later, actually. So what I'm doing here is basically giving myself a little more contrast to work with later. Anyway, right. So here we go. Let's bring the highlights up. I think that's going to be about right. I don't think any of this is really meant to be up, you know, much higher than that. I do, however, think the shadows can come down a bit. And I'm just going to bring it just, just a little bit. What I don't want is them, all the shadows kind of squashing together because you can, you know, they kind of compress and you can see that you're going to be losing information down there and that's, that's a no-no for me. Anyway, our mid-tones, oh, you know what, who knows? Let's go with that. I have no idea. You know, uh, usually if, if it's uh, if it's a complex and dynamic scene, I might dip into the um, our cut, like do a contrast curve and add lots of points and drag it up and down depending on what it can do and try and bring out the most of that scene. There's no point. There's no point me doing it on this. I just I would be having a guess as I've kind of been doing the whole time. Anyway, I think shall I shall I have a look and let's drag the cursor. I'm going to drag it over to the first one. Okay, that'll do for now. Right, time to reveal. Okay, our first scene is... Okay. I'm quite... I'm quite pleased with that. I mean, you know, granted, the lookup table is doing the heavy lifting. Um, but, you know, I was right that it was a... It was a it was a source of light that was meant to be clipped, so I'm pretty happy about that. I don't think I went too dark on the shadows. You can see the... Ah, uh, look. So the reason it wasn't... the shadows weren't down where they should be um, throughout the whole... across the whole frame is because of the flaring. That's what's going on there. I'm quite happy with that. Um, 
Let's move on. The next one is, it's a product, it's a product shot. <laughs> um, okay, I, I'm, I'm all right with that. That's not too bad. It's not as, you know, I'd want to pump it up a bit and maybe add, you know, a tiny, a touch of vignette, add the, some more color, but it's pretty, it's pretty neutral looking. I'm quite happy with the contrast. That's the main thing is that this exercise forces you to nail the contrast. Let's see our next one. It is, it's Dirtle Door down in Dorset. And I, I don't know if I've done such a good job on this one and just, I don't know what's, what have I done here? Did I add a lookup table? I did add a lookup table. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. It needs, it needs, it needs more, more contrast. It needs more color. What did I, what did I start with? Okay. So it's super flat. Okay, and all these points of contrast, that was the grass here. I got it right. It was grass. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not as happy with this, but you know, I think if I was gonna do this, I, yeah, I would probably, uh, it probably needs more saturation really. You know, you want it to look like a beach scene on a sunny day and, um, okay. Let's get back to the other camera. Overall, quite happy quite happy with that. So this is how our first clip turned out. Pretty happy with this. It's not a great shot in general. I think it was just a test clip. And then we have this product shot and I'm pretty happy with this. This is probably the most successful one that I did today. And then we have this, which you saw me mess up. I unwittingly desaturated. Had I not done that, it would look like this and I'm quite happy with this. So I'm gonna go with the positive on this and I'm happy with the contrast ratio in this shot. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed me embarrassing myself. You know, that was seriously challenging and I encourage you to try and try the same exercise. You know, I found myself being really caught up in mainly what the clips were. I was trying to guess what they were and I, I actually don't think that was very helpful. Um, I really should have, instead of worrying about what they were and, you know, and what kind of color, you know, and, and what I could do with the color side of things, I should have been focusing more on just the information that the waveforms were giving me and how I could deal with it in a logical way. So seriously, give this a go. I really encourage you to try it because I just found it fascinating and I really think it's got me thinking differently about how I color grade and I think it's gonna, it's gonna help me going forward. If you do try this, definitely let me know how you get on. I really want to know. And um, let's just, you know, let's share our experiences. Of course, I've made hundreds of videos on this channel of which YouTube has recommended this video for you to watch next. And the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.